Amen. <laughs> well, before we even get to welcome you, we have to thank you first. So um, thank you to the Ursinus College Gospel Choir members under the direction of Brandon Winfield. Um, so glad to have you here. Uh, Brandon and I, I think maybe the last time I saw you was in Jamaica, was it? Yeah, so we were co-leading a service. Thankfully, I was not the one singing, uh, but um, Brandon was singing, and uh, I was helping to leave worship And when we were on a service trip to Jamaica, so it's good to have you all here. Um, welcome to Calvary, and I also want to welcome some special guests. Um, I believe we have the mayor, yes, <laughs> mayor of Collegeville and his wife, uh, the Reverend Betty. Um, so I have all your names in my unorganized notes here. Uh, so the reverends, um, uh, Betty and, um, tell me your first name. H. Sand. H. Sand. H. Sand, okay. Uh, Wright Higgins, so welcome to, to, Ursina, to Calvary. Um, we also have president of the Ursinus Chapel program and Bonner leader, Serena Gaskins. So thank you so much for being here. Serena and I also were in Jamaica painting together. So this is like, <laughs> great. <laughs> so, so glad to have you. This is great to be able to schedule this. Um, we've been fortunate to bring in some special musicians. Um, and certainly as Christian and I were talking and talking about some special options, uh, suggested the gospel choir and Brandon. And I said, that would be awesome. So. Um, Thank you. So you get to hear them again. Um, and then if you would be able to, you're welcome to stay afterwards. We're going to be having some lunch together as we uh, share in some different varieties of soup from the Bethlehem Freezer Ministry. So the Bethlehem Freezer Ministry supplies all of our taco meat as we do our soup kitchen outreach twice a month. They did a giant soup fundraiser uh, this weekend, which was well-timed. And so we have three different varieties to share downstairs along with some delicious breads and desserts and um, lots of other fixings. So if you can join us, and I welcome to join us for lunch and um, just to say hello and get to know our sinus folks a little bit better. So uh, that'll be right after our worship today. Uh, a couple other announcements and reminders looking ahead. Next Sunday is the beginning of Lent, and as we begin our Lenten journey, we'll be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion and a remi reminder that our choir will be singing as well. Um, we do have a March sugar cake bake coming up. You can see that in your bulletin and the signups to, uh, to buy a sugar cake are in the back. Um, also, as we approach Lent, Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday, February 22nd. If you don't feel comfortable driving at night or it's better for your schedule to come at noon, we'll have just a brief service with no music and uh, the distribution of ashes. At seven o'clock will be our main service here in the sanctuary um, with a full service music and the distribution of ashes. Our midweek Lenten programs will then be coming up uh, on the following Wednesday. So there's sign-ups for our uh, bringing soup. There's a lot of soup and chili <laughs> themes. Uh, so sign-ups for bringing soup, uh, that's starting March 1st. And conveniently, it's every Wednesday in March. So all you have to remember is that every Wednesday in March, you should be here for dinner and our midweek Lenten programs. Um, OK, soup, soup. And now I have to talk about chili. OK. So last night, we had an awesome time. We had, we think about 50 folks coming out, um, enjoyed the great music of the Benny Band, had a variety of chilies. We had 10 chilies, so we actually had numbered them one to nine, and then we had a late, late entree, and we had to have a number zero, um, which unfortunately didn't work, but I, work, I didn't uh, win, but I don't think that was because it was zero, so it's okay. Uh, so it was a great night. We did have a tie for the winners. I believe they are here today. Lori and Sam Carroll. Uh, so they're sharing the trophy in the same household. <laughs> um, we had second prizes, Jeff and uh, Alex and I tied for third. There were a lot of ties, so a um, lot of excitement. So thank you all. Thank you to our committee for all your help in, in getting that organized. All right, so I talked about soup, soup, chili, and sugar cake. We just eat, that's all we really do. Okay, I think that is my announcements. Um, You would do it, that was your intro, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. 
just didn't want to cut you off. I do that sometimes. <laughs> All right. Um, as again, as those voices welcomed us to worship, um, we lift our voices today as we come before God in prayer and in worship. Uh, this is Transfiguration Sunday, and so let us rise up. Let's physically rise up as well. Uh, as we come to this place on the mountain, a place of observation, a place of wonder, a place of basking in God's glory uh, for this moment, for these uh, minutes that we have to worship together. Immortal, invisible God, you are beyond words and explanations. Yet you come to us in moments of light and peace, spirit and presence. Searching, and sometimes struggling. Our life is a journey toward you, O oh God. May we pause in thanksgiving of your journey toward us and in all the ways, big and small, that you reveal yourself. Forgive us, God, when we linger too long by the waters and on the mountaintops, enthralled with the glory that flows from you. When we fail to listen to your voice, leading and seeing us, shake us from our intentment and send us forward, endowed with your power. Let's pause for a moment of silent prayer and confession before God. Lord Jesus, on mountaintops and valley floors, you reveal to us the light of your love. Our heart's desire is to bask in the amazing glory of your divine presence. With each encounter, we are changed and transformed. Draw us nearer that we might receive a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Help us, O Holy One, to live our lives as a reflection of divine glory. May we walk among our brothers and sisters as a blessing, bearing light in dark places, hope to dispel and love that cast out hate. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing and praise this immortal, invisible God um, with our hymn 457.
Please be seated. As we continue in worship, we come to a reflection on Psalm 121. The psalmist uh, believed to be David, and there's debate about when this was written. This is often referred to as a traveler's psalm, but I invite you to not be confined to those constraints and let the Holy Spirit speak to you in whatever way it chooses. As you'll see, there will be moments for reflection and there are some guided notes there to reflect upon. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, in heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and As we continue in this moment of prayer, I invite you to name the joys and concerns on your heart this morning. Sam? Uh, I have a concern for the people of Ukraine and the whole Ukraine nation as they prepare for the spring offensive from the Russians. Alan?
also continued prayers for healing for Alyssa. She's she's doing okay with her broken shoulder, but um, prayers of healing and thanksgiving for you all from her sinus. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and loving God, whose nature and ways are far beyond our understanding, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who let us see your face in his who shows us your love in his actions, your grace in his manner of being. Lord, we often find ourselves weary, tired out by a load of care, a heap of responsibility and concern. We hunger and thirst yet often fail to stop and eat and drink at your table. Lord, we are here now, and we ask that you grant us a glimpse of your glory and fill us with your spirit. Refresh us and make us new. Father, we pray for those who have been named in our time of sharing and for all those names that are upon our hearts. Grant to all of them health, wholeness, peace, joy, strength, and hope. Give us, O oh Lord, a greater love of your holiness, greater delight in your mystery, and a greater joy in seeking your presence. We ask all of this through Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So as we continue our prayers, um, at this time of year, it's been two weeks since our uh, church council and since we've elected and welcomed uh, new officers for both our elders and trustees, I just every year like to pause um, around this time to recognize who has been serving on our boards and um, if you are able to stand as I call you your name, that would be wonderful. We won't make you do anything else, I promise. <laughs> Um, but as a, just a prayer, then we'll have just a short prayer as we welcome and, um, and bless our boards. So on our board of elders, we um, did welcome Sharon Edinger um, to serve as well as uh, Dina Zosky. I know both of them, I think, are away, but um, they join myself, uh, Rick Cabry as vice chair, Gary Gibson and Tammy Carroll serving on our board of elders. Uh, very grateful for Mary Vendetta's years of service uh, and also Bob Servette who uh, rotated off. Um, okay, you can sit. <laughs> uh, 
So thank you. We also um, welcome for our Board of Trustees, uh, Dan Benedict for his first term. Kim Kometz will be continuing on, joining uh, Charlie Jenkins, Alex Carroll, David Vendetta as our president, Alyssa Waldron, Larry Wyke, uh, Dave Perringer continues uh, perpetually as our, uh, our treasurer, wonderful treasurer. I shouldn't say perpetually, right? Where is he? <laughs> and um, myself, ex officio, you may stand, I mean, you may sit. <laughs> um, so let's have just a moment of prayer as we continue to thank God for their presence. Lord God, there are so many, many gifts that you have given each and every one of us. And today, especially, let's pause and thank you for the ways that each and every person in this congregation and beyond has been gifted. We know that each of those gifts have been given to us, but there is one spirit, one Lord that gives them all. So thank you for those gifts and help us to continue to be in the, the process of discerning where you have called us. Now thank you again, as we have recognized these board members gifted and tasked with leading our congregation. Thank you for the elders who discern where you are guiding us as a congregation in education, worship and outreach how we may share your love in this place and beyond. Thank you for our trustees who watch and care for our buildings and grounds and fiscal matters and our stewards also of your love. Allow all of us in each and every way that we serve, whether it be a board, uh, as a committee, merely calling or sharing your love with a friend, each of them are valuable and give us an ability to serve and to be your disciples. As we continue to hear this call, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. So again, as we continue to be grateful uh, for God's gifts in our lives, we present to God our morning offerings and our tithes as we can continue the work of ministry in this congregation. So I invite our ushers to come forward. Since we don't have music for, you, you can you can collect. <laughs> I'll just talk. Since we don't have music as we're, uh, and I, don't worry, that's okay, I'm not gonna, gonna sing. Um, but I'll just take a moment to share about our joyful noise, um, especially since we have some new folks here each uh, month. And so right after this time of collecting offerings for our congregation, we do collect a joyful noise, a loose change offering. Um, this month it is going to uh, further our ministry with the Lehigh Conference of Churches Soup Kitchen. You got to hear, if you were in church last week, you heard a little bit more about that. Um, but as you know, we serve on the second and fourth Mondays uh, down at Fifth and Allen, serving about 100 hungry guests uh, each, um, every other week. And in just a moment, we'll collect our joyful noise um, for that benefit for February. So as we continue to praise God and sing our offertory 819 in our hymnals, let's stand. So usually our joyful noise is done with smaller children. 
I'm gonna need the help of the two bigger kids in the room this time. Well, good morning, everyone. In these two passages today, I'm going to be reading from Exodus 24, verses 12 to 18, and then the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, 1 through 9. In hearing these two readings, 
we can hear the ways that Matthew's gospel draws comparisons to Moses. Both Jesus and Moses go up to a mountain to receive affirmation from God. In the Exodus passage, Moses receives the law, but in the Matthew passage, we hear of the transforming of Jesus himself, showcasing his divinity and God's affirmation of him. So I'll be reading from the Pew Bible. If you'd like to follow along, it is in, on page 62. And I'll be beginning with verse 12. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on the Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 nights and 40 days. And in the Gospel of Matthew, it is chapter 17, 1 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. As he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white, suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But while he was speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about this vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Thank you, Jeff. So when I was looking at this passage, I was reading some commentaries and I realized that there's a lot of preachers who in reflecting upon this story, this transfiguration story for this Sunday, bemoan the fact that as unlike many of our stories which happen once every three years as we follow a three year cycle of readings, the transfiguration happens every single year, the, year, the Sunday before uh, the beginning of Lent. It happens in three different versions. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have what appears to be very similar accounts of this story of transfiguration. And these preachers are often writing, uh, it's here again. What am I going to say about the transfiguration? And indeed, they're right. There is incredible similarities. If you look at a parallel account between the three, there is the story, as, as Josh nicely summarized it for us, as we just heard, of Jesus going up the mountain, same three disciples, Peter, uh, James, and John. He is transforming or transfiguring, and we're not really sure exactly what that means, except it's some kind of change. We see the change. It's dazzling right, white, but it's also a change of of something more than appearance of who Jesus is um, or a way of representing that. We have the same two figures that appear in each story, Moses and Elijah. Moses 
uh, bearing the law, Elijah as one of the main prophets, bearing the prophecies. Um, in each story, we have Peter, who's always quick to speak. We know, we know Peter, many stories, but we have Peter not able to control his excitement or not able to control his sense of needing to control this, uh, of building a tent or a dwelling place, of trying to find a way to maybe provide hospitality to those folks that have suddenly appeared with Jesus on the mountain, or maybe trying to control it, or maybe trying to make sense of it. We have God's voice, listen to him. We have the fear of the disciples in hearing that voice, and then we have coming down the mountain. So I read about these folks saying, ah, the transfiguration has come again. And I realized I'm not like that at all. I actually really like the transfiguration story. It's a story about dazzling white. It's a story about reminding us to open our eyes to God's glory around us, to get out of our heads, out of the mundane, out of the worries of the valleys of life. It's a story that can't be explained, and maybe that's the best kind of story, but a story reminding us that life is more than what can be explained. It's also about wonder and awe. And I think the reason why, as I thought of it this week, that I like the Transfiguration so much is that it happens at the perfect time of the year for me. What better time for a story about wonder and awe and dazzling white and getting out of our heads than mid-February, when it usually appears, right? And Maybe as I turned the calendar and woke up on Monday morning and realized, yes, it's Transfiguration Sunday, there was no better Monday for Transfiguration to appear than this past Monday. It was a football game on Sunday. You might have heard it. Um, I was a little bummed, a little bit, about the outcome. I was waking up Monday morning with some struggles about um, some things that we're facing with apartment that we own, some stresses, some unresolved conflicts. I was waking up Monday morning and realized I probably ate too many wings on Sunday. I was waking up Monday morning with a lot of things in process, you might say, a lot of conversations in process. And if you're the kind of person like me, the kind of person that likes to check things off, a kind of person that makes notes on their computer and takes great glory in erasing when those tasks are done, you know that living with a process is really not very much fun. So what happens if you're a person like me when things are in process, when things aren't checked off, when we have to still wade through the valleys of life, when the mundane seems to take over? We obsess about it maybe. Maybe we send too many emails, maybe we worry or are fearful or we get up too early or we stay up too late, or maybe it's just me. Maybe none of that affects you ever, that's okay. <laughs> but what we don't do, people who like to check things off and don't live very well in the process, uh, who don't live very well not knowing how things will turn out, what we don't do often is that we don't sit still and we don't listen. And it's Monday, in the midst of this all, the transfiguration story appears. And I gotta admit, at first I love it, right? A dazzling white Jesus, that's what I need to break up my dull, mundane February day. I need to be on that mountain. I need to be made aware of God's glory. As I was putting this to, to print on Friday, I looked at the daily text and read from Psalm 104, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. And our prayer from our daily text reminds us to open our eyes in faith. And if we would, we prayed, we would see your undeniable fingerprints on the galaxies and the heavens and the wonders of the earth and the abundant forms of life in our world how much I need on that dull February day to open my eyes to the glories of God that is around me on mountaintops and in this world to take me to the mountain. And so I like transfiguration in that way and I can put myself in Peter's shoes. And again, I think Peter brought up his list of to-do things and he wanted to get things done and his hammer and his nail and he wanted to build those tents to do something, to keep 
Moses and Elijah, these rock stars of his faith, right? To keep them there, to provide hospitality to them, to be what would be commanded of a good Jew to, to welcome them um, and appreciate them. But then God speaks. And when I hear God's voice through listening, which doesn't happen often sometimes, but when I hear God's voice, and if it's through someone else as well, I know that often I find myself like Peter, too busy building, too busy doing, and I don't want to admit that God is speaking here, and I don't want to do what God commands as he did to those disciples, listen, listen. And I understand and I completely get where Peter and James and John's are coming from as we hear the reaction after God's voice came down and said, this is my beloved son, listen to him, and they react in fear. Because again, maybe like them, I react and, but I wanna control this. I can control this. Listen, I wanna get it finished. Listen, I can make it work. Just one more email. Listen. I can do it. Listen. So, let's back up a second. Do you find it surprising in this story about what doesn't cause Peter, James, and John to be afraid? So we know that they're afraid, and that's one of the last verses that we hear about how they were fearful. And Jesus says, do not be afraid. But let's back up to the beginning of the story and think about what doesn't cause them to be afraid. Isn't it surprising that the story begins as they come up to the mountaintop uh, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah. And now to Jews in the first century to have Moses and Elijah long dead, the bearers of all of what is their ancestry, their, their heritage, their faith, to have Moses, the giver, the, the one who received the law, to have Elijah, the chief of the prophets, the one who ascended to God rather than dying, to have the rock stars of their faith appear on a mountain, we don't hear that they're afraid at this moment. It doesn't even seem to surprise them or they don't tremble. We don't hear of that. We don't hear when Jesus begins to glow, dazzling white, there's no reaction of, Mo of James, Peter, John to be afraid in that moment. But what causes them fear? What causes them fear is that when God's voice tells them to listen, to stop their planning, their controlling, their acting as human beings do, and to listen. It seems that listening to them is more frightening than a glowing Jesus, is more frightening than very, very, very dead ancestors coming back and being on a mountain with them, it's merely being commanded to listen is what causes them fear. And maybe that's where I was on Monday when that, that little rain cloud was on top of me, maybe being overwhelmed by adulting, as we might say. Um, and I have to admit, as we were there in the soup kitchen and I was helping to serve at the Conference of Churches, looking back, there were plenty of moments when God was speaking on that morning. And as I was unloading things out of my car early in the morning, I realized I didn't hear God speaking as a man kindly stopped traffic for me, helped me carry and unload my car full of the soup kitchen supplies across the street. And it wasn't until just as we were leaving when this same man who helped us and had been served lunch called out from across the room, remembering my name from a few hours ago, and said, Janelle, it's Anthony. Thanks for the great lunch. Thanks for remembering us. It was then maybe I realized that Monday wasn't the day of checking off things off of a list. It was a day to be present and to listen. Monday wasn't a day about solving much. I wasn't gonna solve, or I still can't, we still can't about the Super Bowl. I wasn't gonna solve some issues that were still working themselves out within my life. But Monday was a day to serve a hot meal, to be present, and to listen. And I almost left without doing that at all. So sometimes I think in life it's just the busyness of, of what we are in, or the planning, or just life that gets in the way of listening. But often I think, and I think this passage uh, nails it for us, 
It is also, like Peter and James and John found, it is also about the fear of listening. It's the fear of having to say that we might need to change our patterns. It's the fear of having to realize that a situation might not be in our control. It's a fear of having to realize that at the end of the day and in the beginning of the day, we truly need to trust God. We truly need to say that we will have enough, enough money, enough food, enough power to get us through. We might not have what we want, and maybe I realize that by the end of the week, but I realize now that we will have enough, enough. So if I'm to be honest, as I hope I was, I realized that the transfiguration story was needed at that moment is needed, I think, at these moments in the midst of February for us to realize how the disciples felt on that mountain and to realize that listening is often the most fearful part of any journey of discipleship. So this Lenten season that we're quickly approaching as Ash Wednesday comes to us on Wednesday of this week, we will be exploring the idea of pilgrimage, of journeying, um, we'll be asking ourselves what it means to think of life rather as a checklist or a completed task or something that needs to be done as being part of God's journey, as being on a pilgrimage. Um, we're never going to arrive fully formed in faith, just as we'll never stay on the mountaintop of the dazzling white Jesus and his appearance, but we are going to spend a lot of time wandering around the wilderness of life. Pilgrims, as we're going to get into during Lent, is what we are called to be. Pilgrims defined as those who listen to each other, who carry each other on an unknown journey, a journey that can't be completely planned or finished or is not yet. But maybe as we still linger a little bit on this mountaintop today, we can hear that voice again of God saying, listen, and be reminded not to allow fear to get in our way of listening. Uh, not to allow fear to cause us to turn back to the busyness, the checklist, the things that we think we can control, but to pause along that journey, along this difficult and beautiful and strange thing of life, and to listen. Amen. So we are again blessed as we, we can conclude our time of worship together to listen and to be gifted the gift of music. So Brandon, again, I thank you for bringing all of you. Uh, thank you, Ursinus College Gospel Choir, for joining us today. And um, the blessing is how we're going to be sent off. So thank you.
like to say is amen. Can we say it together? Amen. amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you.